Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my Q&A video. So I recently reached 200 subscribers on my channel and in order to celebrate that I decided to do a Q&A video. So I asked you guys to leave me some questions, which a few of you did. So I am today going to go through and answer all of your questions. So let's just jump straight in and get to the questions. First off, we have three questions from Bookish Infection. The first of that is, who is your least favorite character? My least favorite character is Dolores Umbridge. I cannot stand Dolores Umbridge. She is a horrible human being and I hate her more than I hate Voldemort. I cannot stand her. She is by far my least favorite character in existence, hands down. Bookish Infection's next question was, what book character reminds you of your mother? This was a really, really hard question and I thought about it for a while and in the end I decided to go with Lily Potter. Um, I was trying to think about characteristics of my mother and like find characteristics of her in like characters um, and basically what it came down to was that Lily Potter her love for her children, she dies for Harry. And that is really the quality that I think, like my mother embodies. I think that she would die, like for me or my brother or my sister or um, like her grandkids, my sister's kids um, or my dad. Like I just, that is the real quality that I think my mum has that reminds me of Lily Potter is like her greatest gift that she gave Harry was her love. And yeah, so I picked a Lily Potter for this question. The final question from Bookish Infection was a book slash writing related job you'd like to do. Um, any of them? I literally would love to be anything in like bookish writing related. I would love to be an author. I would love to do something in editing, in publishing. I would love to be a librarian, a bookseller, a book reviewer. Literally anything would be awesome. So I'm really not picky. Anything that I thought I could get into and like make a living of it, I would love to do. Um, so yeah, literally anything. The next question comes from Kizzy Reads and that is no matter what genre it is or how many books are in it, but what is your favorite series you would recommend to everyone? My answer, I know it's cliche and I'm gonna try and make this video not all Harry Potter, but I gotta go with Harry Potter. This is by far my favorite series. It obviously has seven books in it, but I would recommend this book series to literally everyone. Um, people who haven't read it and say that they're not sure if they would enjoy it um, because they're older now, like, just read it. Just read it and try because I think you'll love it. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, but I gotta go with Harry Potter on this one. My next question comes from Steve Donahue and that is, where do you get books, physical shops that is not online or is it mostly online? Um, to be honest, it's mostly online. The majority of the books that I purchase are from Book Depository. I get the majority of my books there because I find the price is quite reasonable and as it has free shipping, um, it just generally turns out to be their best option. If I am buying physical books, like in store, I will generally get them from Target um, because again, Target's prices are fairly reasonable. Um, however, they only really have like newer release books. Um, I do love Dimmix, which is a big um, book chain here in Australia, and I love it in there. I could spend hours in there just browsing, but it is really, really expensive. And I just can't justify spending that amount on a book when I could order it basically from Book Depository and get it for so much cheaper with free shipping. And I do obviously have to wait a little bit for the book to come, but I have so many books on my TBR that that's not really an issue. So generally, if I'm buying them... In person, it is from Target and online, I generally shop from Book Depository. If you guys have any suggestions for other great places online to buy books, then please do let me know. Um, as I say, normally it's shipping that becomes an issue because shipping is just so expensive um, to Australia. So yeah, Book Depository is generally what I go with. Next, we have a question from Mel from That Girl Bookworm, and that is, what is your job? I've never heard you mention what you do for work, and I'm quite curious. I am a paralegal at a law firm. Um, I got involved in kind of legal work um, about two years out of high school. I um, 
became a trainee legal secretary and I worked at that firm for almost five years and I got out of the legal um, work kind of for a little while but I did get back into it and I am now a paralegal at a law firm here in Adelaide. Um, so being a paralegal, basically, it's hard to explain. It's different for every kind of paralegal. I work in um, real estate, in um, um, leasing. So I basically deal with um, retail leasing, which means I deal with leases for shopping centers and things like that. So yeah, that's basically what I do for work. The next question comes from David Wardrope, and that is, how often do you go to the library? Um, about once a week. Um, it depends. If I don't have any books waiting for me coming off hold, then I don't. I may just go and drop books off in the um, return shoots and not actually go into the library. But generally, I have something waiting for me, so I generally go into the library. I would say at least once a week, generally. The next question comes from Chris Vigilante, and that is, if you were going to name your kid after a book character, what character would you pick? This is, again, a really hard question, and I've actually thought about this a lot because a lot of the characters that I really, really admire, not just in books but in TV as well, have names that I wouldn't necessarily name my child, like Hermione, for example. Hermione is one of my all-time favorite characters, but... It's not a name that I would probably call my child. Again, Luna, that's another character from Harry Potter that I really, really love. And McGonagall or Minerva, again, not a name that I necessarily would name my child. And even like in TV, one of my all-time favorite characters ever and my favorite TV show of all time is Buffy from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But Buffy is not a name that I would call my child. So I may be more likely to name a pet after a um, book character than I would my child. If I did name my child after a book, it would probably just be more coincidental than anything because I feel like it's a big deal to name your child after a character and unfortunately I just don't like most of those names or it would just be coincidence that my child happened to be named the same thing as a book character. Next we have four questions from Eva from Fred Weasley Died Laughing. The first of those is, what cities around the world would you love to visit? My number one all-time travel like destination that I would love to visit is London. Um, my number two destination is Paris, which used to be number one, and I'm not sure really why it changed, but London is just somewhere I really, really want to visit. Like, if I could get on a plane right now and go somewhere, that is where I would choose to go. Um, Paris, as I said, is another um, big city that I would really love to visit. I would also obviously love to um, visit anywhere um, in Europe, like Rome, Italy, Greece, Germany, the Netherlands, Scotland, and Ireland, and oh, I just want to visit everywhere, and if I could visit everywhere, um, like the US, I just would love to go anywhere, but London is my number one destination. Her next question is, if you could insert yourself into a story in a book, what would it be? And I said I wasn't going to make this a Harry Potter video, but I don't know that there's any other world besides Harry Potter that I would choose to insert myself into. Um, yeah, I, just, I can't think of any other one, like... If I can go to Hogwarts, like, I would do that in a heartbeat. And, like, I'm too old to go to Hogwarts, but I still really want to go. So it's got to be Harry Potter world. Her next question is, if you had to choose one book to reread for the rest of your life, as in you can read new books, but you can only ever reread one specific one, which one would you choose? Um, if I was allowed to choose a series, it would, of course, be Harry Potter. If I had to choose a standalone, I think I would either go with The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins um, because this is a book that I really, really love and I feel like I could reread this a lot and like enjoy it. Or my other option for a standalone would be Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen because again, that is a book that I could read over and over and just continue to enjoy. So I'm not sure out of those two standalones, but it would be one of the two. Okay. I found something on. And Siri just tried to get involved in this Q&A video. But as I was saying, it would either be The Woman in White or Pride and Prejudice. And the final question from Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing is, if you could bring a book character to life, who would it be? Um, I think going back to Jane Austen, I am going to go with Elizabeth Bennet. I love Elizabeth Bennet. I think she is probably my favourite heroine of Jane Austen's and 
I feel like I could be friends with her. She's so sassy. I love her. I would love to see her in today's world and see like what she thought about today's world and just everything in it. And oh, I just, I think that she would be a really awesome character to bring to life. And finally, we have two final questions from Mel from That Girl Bookworm. The first of those is, what are some of your favorite books that you own that you've never had the chance to mention or talk about on your channel? Mostly just because I'm curious what books you owned prior to BookTube. So I have two um, series basically that I want to mention. The first of those is Tomorrow When the War Began by John Marsden. You may have heard of this. This is an Australian YA series that follows a group of kids who live in an outback area in Australia and they go kind of on a camping trip over like a long weekend and they're away in kind of you know a little bush area and they see all these planes flying over and they're not really sure what's happening and when they get back from that camping trip they discover that an undetermined country has invaded Australia and is taking over Australia and they basically have to decide like what they're going to do about that do they go into hiding they basically end up becoming kind of like a gorilla. I don't even know, but they really, it's a really, really great series. I believe it has six or seven books. Um, I do own them all, but they're all the way up the top of my bookshelf. But this is a really, really great YA series. Um, this is some of the best um, YA that Australia has to offer, in my opinion. Um, I definitely recommend checking this out if this sounds like something that would interest you because it is a really, really great book series. And another series that I thought I would mention just quickly that I owned prior to BookTube is The Spellman Files by Lisa Lutz. This is a series that I think has five or six books. And it is just kind of a chiclet-ish type um, series that follows a family of private detectives. It is a really humorous um, series that is just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed these books um, when I read them a couple of years ago. Um, if you are really interested in finding kind of a light-hearted, just fun, funny read, then I would definitely, definitely recommend picking this up. I wasn't super happy with the way the last book ended, but I still really enjoyed the series overall, and I do think it is worth checking out. And Mel's final question is, would you ever do a TBR shelf video of all of your TBR books? Um, it is something that I have considered. However, all of my books on my TBR are books that I have hauled since I started BookTube. So they are all books that I've shown at some point. Um, but if that is something that would interest people, I could give it a go. However, it may be a while because currently most of my TBR books are on piles on the floor in my bedroom um because they don't fit onto that bookshelf but I am kind of planning a kind of overhaul of my shelves sometime soon getting rid of some books um that I don't need anymore and then kind of reorganizing them all and then kind of having the smaller bookcase that I do have in my bedroom as a dedicated um TBR shelf so I don't know if I would do like a full involved tour that involved like pulling out every single book and showing you what it was but if you guys would kind of like a bit more of an overview kind of video of my TBR bookshelf then um let me know down below and that is something I will definitely consider doing once I've kind of overhauled all my shelves so those are all the questions that I have for this Q&A video. Thank you once again to all of my subscribers for getting me to 200 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who asked me a question. I really, really appreciate it. If you have thought of a question now that you would love me to answer, just leave it in the comments down below and I'll be sure to answer you down there. Um, please um, like this video if you liked it. Please comment down below if you have any further questions or anything like that that you want to discuss. Um, please um, subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. But that's all I have for this video today. Bye, guys.